Hey, this is David for Big Bits, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the value win function on PineScript for TradingView. And this is going to be a video where we cover that function and kind of how it works. But since it's really just one little function, we're actually going to go into an example of how you can actually use it in a strategy. Uh, and of course, this is just an example, so probably not going to be too useful of an actual strategy so much as the example to show you how you can actually apply it to your own. So before we begin, if you haven't already, please check out the TradingView profile. And you can also, if you're considering a paid plan on TradingView, use a referral that is in the description of the video. You can also find a link to my profile down there where we've done a bunch of other scripts and done a bunch of other things on TradingView with this particular YouTube account. And that's all in the description of the video. So if you're down there, just go ahead and leave a like. And if you would subscribe because we do these kind of videos all the time. Now, back to our value win function. I've created a little script just for this particular video. And if you're not familiar, and you probably aren't because you're watching this video, the value win function will give you a value when a condition happened. And what's really neat about this is you can tell it when the last condition was. So how many times ago this condition occurred, you can get that value back. So, so for example, we want to see the closing price on a candle when the golden cross happened but we don't want the price of the most recent golden cross we want one three times back well you can do that and there's plenty of other examples where you can find to do this to find those conditions in previous candles going back so that you can actually apply them to your strategy and i think the way i'm going to show you today is pretty useful for some strategies but let's go ahead and get talking about actual value win now, the first thing you'll notice is we have two moving averages, a green and a red. And typically on my channel, the green is a 50 period single moving average and the red is a 200 period single moving average. And I do this because you're usually working with a golden or death cross when you're using a 500 and two, or a 50 and 200, excuse me. So what we're gonna be capturing first of all is the value when, and we're gonna save this as the last cross, we're gonna get the value when there was a crossover from the MA1 to the MA2, and the MA1 is a green line and the MA2 is a red line. So we're going to get the closing price on the candle where the crossover occurred. So it should be around here. And what we're going to do to define what we're going to return is here. This is our second part of this function, and that is the source. So when this condition is true, it's going to return this value and on this occurrence. So the reason I've chosen zero is because this is actually the first occurrence and you're probably going to be tempted to put one in here. And if you were, at least with the way the script's working for me, you're going to get the second instance back. So let's go ahead and plot these things. I've already got MA1 and MA2 plotted, so I'm going to just uncomment this code and show you where the last cross is. You're going to see some yellow circles now show up on the screen. So great. You can actually see there is a bit of a difference here. There is one line here and another here, uh, at least the circles, I should say. So we had our crossover occur here. You can see the value. You can see the value here. So you can see we're at 73.87. And just to prove this is different lines, you have 73.26 back here. So what it's doing is it's getting you the value of the close when that crossover happened on the very first instance. Now, say we want to go back and get an instance farther back. Say we want to get this value on our last cross, and this should make this line uh, actually start here. So we should have 73.26 instead of 73.87 here if we move this and change it back to 1. And sure enough, we do. So that just kind of shows you that this is a zero-based index, like a lot of things on TradingView, and you have to actually start with zero when you want the first value in something. And that's very important to remember. And of course, you can go back much further than that. Let's just go back five just for the fun of it. So that's where our golden cross occurred six times ago, because it's n plus one on the uh, occurrences backwards, on the nth concurrence. So that's something to keep in mind. And that was over at uh, 11,516. So wow, that's, that's pretty high up there back there. But 
let's go ahead and change this back to zero because in the example I'm going to be showing you, we're actually just going to be doing a very simple strategy to where we are looking to enter into a position long when the RSI is low. But instead of just using a low RSI, we want to also make sure that we are entering our position above our last cross price. That way we can kind of confirm that the price has been moving up and it hasn't just kind of flatlined like it has here. And we want our RSI to be low, so that means the price has come up and it's went down sharply and we have a low RSI, so this might be a good opportunity to buy. Now, like I said, this probably isn't gonna work out that great because there's a lot of other things that I would like to add to this strategy, but we're gonna go ahead and work with what we've got here and just show you how values win can be useful in the strategy here. So let me go ahead and copy some code over here. I've done a lot of this before the video actually started, so we're not gonna have to wait around for some live coding. Uh, let me copy over my inputs. Okay, so we have an oversold or an overbought RSI, and the reason I brought in the overbought was so that this is another way to exit the trade as well, as opposed to just a take profit and a stop loss. We've already got our last cross, and we've plotted that, so now we need to calculate our RSI, and then we also need to calculate our profit and loss targets. We can do that with our other calculations here. So we have our MA1, MA2, RSI, profit target, and loss target. Now we can determine whether our necessary conditions are true for buying or selling. So let's go all the way down here. All right, these are our conditions. We want our MA1 to be greater than MA2. So we currently want the green line above the red line. We want our closing price right now to be above the closing price of our last cross. So we would want the price currently to be above this yellow line and at any other point in the history of this particular strategy. Now we also want the RSI to be less than the oversold RSI. And that's an input that's at 30 by default that we can change with the settings later. And then finally, we also want the current price to be greater than the red line as well and that's just to make sure that we aren't buying when things are dumping straight through and there's likely another crossover well, at least that's just my theory here so the other conditions are for selling so this determines when we're going to enter position this is going to determine when we want to exit so we're going to exit on a death cross or if our rsi is greater than our overbought rsi so the cross under kind of acts like a stop loss because in order for the price to cross under with these averages, the price is gonna to have to go down. And we can also kind of take profit if the RSI ever gets back above the overbought RSI value. And we're also throwing in our take profit and our stop loss. These are just kind of safety nets to get us in and out quicker. Now that we have that, all we have to do is copy in our functions for our strategy to actually get in and out of trades. You can see if we are a buy, we're going to enter into a long called low RSI in an uptrend. And that's because with the golden cross and the price above the last cross value, we would expect it to be in an uptrend, or at least I would. Now, the other thing we're going to be doing is we're also going to be planning an exit here called take profit or stop loss. We're going to toss in our profit and our loss values there. Now, if you're curious about how that actually works, because there is a little bit of code involved with calculating your profit and loss targets, I have another video about that in this series earlier on, so please go check that out if you haven't already. Now, the other one, of course, is we're going to sell. This is how we're going to close our long and really this is very simple, we just call close on strategy, but it's based on whether or not our conditions are telling us we should sell. So let's go ahead and save this, and hopefully it'll work on the first try after I've copied this code back over from Notepad. Yeah, there we go. So you can see, based on the strategy tester, on the performance summary, this is gonna net you 2.48% profit with 0.1% fees on each trade. So let's actually go and look at the list of trades. You can see 5%, 5%, 4.92, those most likely hit the take profit. And then there looks like there's several here who hit the stop loss at 5%, many more at 5%. 
So this one's pretty interesting. There's a lot of trades going on. Most of them were profitable. And it seems like we could probably tweak a few things to make it a little bit better. And I'm sure you're probably thinking of plenty more things that you could add in on your own if you're a little bit more experienced with trading. So you can always take this as an example of how to use that to help you. Now this video has been all about the value win function and how we can actually use that and incorporate that into a strategy. I hope this has actually helped with that and you actually understand the value win function and when you might want to actually use that for yourself. So I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please leave a like. And if you like these types of videos, I do plenty of them. I have a tutorial series here on TradingView, over 30 videos at this time. And you can always subscribe and get updates on that whenever they happen. But we also do other videos here on the channel. And of course, always check out the TradingView profile and sign up with a referral link to get $30 towards your paid plan on TradingView. But I think that is it for now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. All right, have a nice day.